Okay, sup you chuckle fucks, it's your boy Dark Rock Goo here with What If EC Had God Powers. Now, before I go on with this what if, let me begin into saying that this is going to be the Six Hunger Special. Fuck it, I have been holding on for the Six Hunger Special for a while. I haven't actually thought of anything to kind of make it into a movie. Maybe I can find something else to make into a movie. Maybe I would just say this, this is a false Six Hunger, maybe. I don't care. I'm just gonna just do this, but yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I literally got hyped up for mostly the One Piece, uh, what's it called? One Piece, uh, fifth gear reveal. I watched that yesterday. Well, yeah, yesterday morning at four o'clock in the fucking morning. I have no re. Okay, I have no clue in reason why I was staying up that late. There was just like, I, I don't know. I just fucking had no clue. Of course, um, that shit was absolute hype. That was amazing. I love it. I love all the Looney Tunes shit and other stuff. But not the point. Um, I was watching that for like in the morning. And then I just woke up at like 9 o'clock. I was tired of shit. And I was like, ah, fuck. Oh, I'm so tired. But not the point. I am a little tired right now. I am going to have to go to sleep. So I can actually wake up tomorrow at 6, 6.40. Because, well, mostly I have to go take someone to school. Yeah, it's a pain. But not the point. Let me begin into this what if, and let me shut the fuck up. So, I don't know how long I'm going to do this. Probably like 10, 20 minutes, something like that. I also want to continue on with the what if Issei became a hollow. I know uh, also I'm going to continue on what if Issei is a Shinigami or a uh, stray Shinigami. So, no, no, just stray Shinigami, but not the point. I have multiple ideas for that one also. I'm also going to continue the Spyro one, the Dragon Monarch one. And also, what else am I going to continue on? Oh, yeah. I am still going to continue on with Takamichi becoming a Marine. Or was a Marine. Or right, you get the point, right? Um, I will also try to continue on with the uh, Sukuna one and also the Dofi one. The, uh, what's it called? Morty Jim one. But, yeah, you get the point. I've been doing a lot of, like, part ones. And I should probably continue on with those. Because a lot of you really like... Well, some of the part ones that I brought back or just decided to make. Just like the Sukuna one. It's been two days and a lot of people, uh, yeah, a lot of people like you pretty much watch it and really want part two. Or whatever. But not the point. Let me just begin into this what if. Let me shut the fuck up and let me begin. So, we begin into mostly a guy with kind of brownish hair. Of course, his eyes are supposed to be goldenish brown. But they seem to be fake. Fake goldenish brown eyes. But no one else knows about them being fake. Of course, the word, well, he's right now having tannish skin and is right now kind of sitting on top of the rooftop of a school. This is where, well, he's right now holding on to the gate. Well, not the gate, mostly like this fence because there's a fence kind of on top of the school. He knows that this fence is only here to stop people from doing anything crazy, stupid, or idiotic. But this is where, well, he just doesn't seem to care too much. He wants to actually climb on top of it, but this is where, well, mostly what stops him is none other than two other people that are right beside him. That are right now kind of like talk about perverted stuff. It's none other than his two idiotic friends, <clears throat> Matsuda and Morahama. Matsuda is a guy with mostly bald, mostly his hair is kind of bald because, well, he kind of shaved that while ago. He has his eyes always closed, tannish skin, and of course, wearing the school uniform. <clears throat> The school uniform of what school they go to. Mostly it's called Kuo. Of course, they are actually right now the age of being, well, 17, but not the point. There are second years, but not the point either. Of course, it worked well. Next to him is a boy named Morahama. Morahama is a boy with kind of not darkish tennis skin like Matsuda, but he has kind of tennis skin also. This worked well. He has, well, not tennis, it's kind of a little bit colorish, but tennis, but not the point. This worked well. He has, well, glasses that usually doesn't show his eyes too much because they usually glitters in the well, light, but not the point. Round glasses, but not the point. Black hair, actually black hair instead of being cut like Matsuda's. And this is where, well, he has the blazer on mostly the school uniform, the school they go to the same too. And of course, where, well, he's a little bit shorter than Matsuda, but Matsuda's kind of like 5'8", while he's like 5'7". But this is where, well... Beside both of them is actually someone, well, none other than the brownish hair boy. 
This is where, well, the brownish hair boy does kind of have a little bit like tannish skin, but at the same time, he's palish. You can't really tell if it is or if he's wearing makeup or if it's an illusion. No one really can tell. But this is where, well, he's not really paying attention to the two idiotics who's actually doing their kind of talk or whatever. But yeah. But this is where, well, mostly while those two are talking, mostly Matsura and Morahama, their brownish hair kind of friend is right now just looking outside or mostly in front of the courtyard of the school. This is where, well, he sees a lot of people just talking. They're outside just either talking or whatever. It's mostly during lunch. And of course, mostly his two friends decide to come up here to just talk and other things. While the brownish hair boy just didn't really care and where to go. Well, not really talk. They actually wanted to go to the kennel club. To the, not kennel club, to the kennel club to actually spy on them. But mostly the brownish hair boy didn't feel like it. Instead, he wanted to go to the rooftop. This is where his two perverted friends decide to follow him. And yeah, this is where, this is why they're actually up here. But yeah, the brownish hair boy sighs and this is where, well, before he sighs and decides to kind of go talk to his friends, he noticed something. The gate right now busted open in the front courtyard. Now, before I go on to it, there is someone mostly kind of making a lot of girls kind of blush in the front kind of courtyard, mostly a pretty boy. Who kind of able to kind of charm mostly a lot of girls. And he is also quite perverted but doesn't really show it too much unlike the pervert trio. But this one, well, he's a guy with kind of like blackish, kind of like blackish greenish hair a little bit but not the point. He does have kind of greenish eyes a little bit but not the point. They're kind of lightish but not the point. He's a man who is kind of at the same level as kind of hot and amazing in some girls' opinions as like Kiba Yuta. So, of course, where, well, a lot of people do compare them to that. But this is where, well, he's over here kind of flirting with some of the girls. Now, why I'm actually mentioning this person is because, well, we go back into the gates busting up. Mostly the front, kind of like front gates of the school. The gates exploded and this is where, well, mostly just kind of just got destroyed off his hinges. And this is where, well, everyone was confused and shocked until what they saw was mostly someone riding a bike. And kind of getting inside. Even some other people kind of getting inside. Now this is where, well, mostly everyone's confused. But this is where, well, the person that gets off the bike was someone super freaking tall. He looks to be somewhere around like 6'9 or something. Probably even taller. But no one can really tell in what height he is. He had a, mostly he had like this yellow, yellow patch of hair on top of his head. But all around is almost bald. He also does have some of a ponytail, but not the point. This is where, well, he seems to have tattoos and has crazy look in his eyes. This is where, well, he also has kind of like this outfit slash kind of coat, but not the point. It's not a coat, it's like a uniform outfit, kind of looks like, but looks to be like some kind of biker gang kind of uniform, but not the point. The color is, well, so mostly he's wearing like a red kind of like shirt that's like uniform that does have like someone to symbol, but of a biker gang. He does have red pants and like white kind of like boots this is where well he has uh, such a psychotic look in his eyes and also a uh, such a psychotic grin but this is where well we go into the other people that kind of seem to appear now the other people look like to be well so there's actually two people beside him mostly a guy with kind of like blackish and goldenish hair now goldenish kind of like bang long hair that's kind of looks like to be in two ponytails but not the point but into the side of his head, mostly side of like his mostly body that kind of goes down on his like torso, uh, mostly a torso. And this is where, well, he seems to have like mostly this like tire look somewhat. The other person seems to have a serious kind of look, but has glasses. This is where, well, his hair is kind of like long, but is mostly like blonde and even a light blue tint of hair color. Now their eye color is mostly, well, they are both mostly grayish eye color, and this is where, well, one is actually tall, mostly the guy with kind of like ponytails, while the other one's kind of shorter, but not the point. This is where, well, beside them is actually someone who's, so he has kind of like blondish hair, mostly to, beside them is actually a guy with blondish hair, but mostly like blondish hair that's kind of going to like a side way. Mostly it looks to be mohawk, it looks like a mohawk, but mostly going to the side, mostly left side. The right side has a, like a tattoo symbol on his like side of his head that kind of looks like something but not the point. This is where, well, 
He seems to have a crazy look in his eyes, and of course, the word, well, he looks to have such an arrogant kind of attitude towards him. Arrogant airs around him, mostly like if he had some kind of god complex for a second. But this word, well, beside that person, or mostly next to the other big ass dude, is mostly someone else. Now, there seems to be another person that seems to be quite tall as mostly the guy who seems to be having like phony tails, but not the point. This is where, well, he has mostly like his hair is kind of sticking up. He has kind of blondish hair, but blackish at the same time. Mostly the side of around him is kind of blackish hair. This is where he has an earring on him, mostly like a golden earring. This is where, well, he has golden eyes, or not golden eyes, mostly. Yeah, he has golden eyes, but this is where, well, he also has, well, mostly these tattoos in his hand. Mostly in the back of his hand that either say sin or punish, but not the point. This is where, well, mostly behind them is like a bunch of members who are just fodder and not really, whoever cares about them that much, but not the point. <laughs> but this is where, well, everyone got kind of got startled from these people. This is where, well... One person is kind of just looking. This is where it's the guy who seems to be the tallest. Mostly seems to be the leader. He's looking around and just looking at all these pathetic weaklings. The reason why he came here was mostly looking for something that's called the God of Delinquent. Well, supposedly, or mostly just someone who's strong. But, of course, the rumors of something like that. This is where, well, he just wanted this person to join him. Someone strong. Because he heard of something like this. But maybe he just hearing rumors. Rumors that are kind of stupid that he listened to another different gang. Oh, uh, whatever. This is where, well, he's now in the school. He can rule over whatever. It's supposed to be the most popular school, co -wet, whatever, bullcrap. It used to be co -wet, but now it's like, well, yeah, now it's kind of with genders, but not the point. But this is where, well, mostly, let me say that again. So, with that happening, this is where, well, mostly, uh, everyone is so scared, but this is where the guy with kind of, like, darkish, kind of, like, greenish hair, and kind of lightish green eyes, kind of just looks at the big guy and says, hey, um, this is where, well, the guy is kind of scared and kind of, like, wondering if you should do it or not, kind of, like, try to fight against these people. Of course, maybe it will rise his kind of population up with the girls more, because, well, he's already cute and pretty, but this is where, well, he wants mostly the girls to kind of see that he's brave enough to fight against these crooks, in his words. But, of course, mostly someone is kind of looking at this with mostly emotionless looks and eyes. Mostly the brownish hair boy. This is where our yeah, brownish hair boy with goldenish brown eyes. He's looking at these kind of people. Well, basically, not in a very moosey look. And seems not to care too much if they're even here, in front of him, causing trouble. He seems to not really care about what is happening. Why should he care? It's all in the past that he kind of remembers something. This is where, well, he seems not to care. His friend seems to not even notice about this. And this is where, well, mostly he kind of just thinks... Should he go? No. Nah. Nah. Fuck that. He doesn't care. This is where, well, mostly he decides to watch and what the hell the guy does. If you can remember right, the guy's name is Sen something. He doesn't really care too much on what is his actual name or whatever bullcrap. It's Tijin? Tijin? Whatever. It's not Taiju. He can't really remember what the person's name is, but he really never cared too much to even pay attention. Then he really doesn't remember Kiba's name neither. He calls him Blondie. This is where, well, he doesn't care about remembering uh, specific people's names, not even the girls. The brownish hair boy kind of thinks. He really doesn't, he really does not care about remembering names. But this is where, well, he narrows his eyes at one boy who kind of has kind of like goldenish blonde hair and of course mostly spiky up and this is where, well, is he's the one kind of in like the group of mostly gang members. He narrowed his eyes in this work well, he then had a little small idea in his head. In this work well, he has such an evil, vicious grin appear on his face. Well, mostly for like a couple of seconds. In this work well, we go back into the group. Now, this work well, the person is going to try to fight them and actually show that he's brave and acting very courageous. Well, yeah. Cur uh, courageous in front of the girls. This is where, well, mostly for some reason, one of them was already smoking, and it was mostly the guy who had the, mostly behind his hands, sin or punish. He, for some reason, got very unnervous. Well, mostly unnerved. 
it, it wasn't from the guy who's act, supposedly acting courage for or whatever. No, for some reason he had this weird feeling that he's going to be stuck in the school, not by his leader, by someone else, much more scary than his leader. But that's where, well, mostly the guy says, mostly we go back into the green shark dude. Don't worry, girls, the guy kind of says. I'll protect you. I'll defeat these evildoers with my fists. This is where, well, mostly the gang, biker gang members, like, sweatshop at this guy. Like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, some kind of actor movie? What the fuck? This is where, well, mostly the leader doesn't seem too amused from this person. Just like, what the hell is this guy supposed to do? This is where, well, all the girls kind of cheer at his name. Mostly calling him, well... Let's call this guy Midori. It's similar to Midoriya, but mostly I just search on Japanese translator. What is green and it's the same Midori. So let's just call him Midori. I don't like Midoriya from mostly my hair academia, so fuck it. Let's go with that. So Midori. His name is Midori and a bunch of girls are cheering saying, Go Midori and other things. And this is where, well, mostly Midori says, Yeah, I got this. This is where, well, mostly Midori is kind of walking up to these like people he's ready to kind of fight them and this is where well the leader of mostly this gang kind of just looks at this person this is where before even Midori decides to throw a punch at this guy he already gets taken down instantly by mostly the leader the leader mostly punched him so hard in the face smashing him down to the ground Midori was down for the count this is where well, all the girls kind of just wind their eyes seeing like Midori just get taken out instantly this is where well we'll see the leader says, oh, so pathetic. Is that really all the school can actually, well, show me? Just a couple of pathetic weaklings. He's looking around. He sees the girls, of course, and you're going to do shit. This is where, well, he then sees the guys. And all of them seem to be quite cowards. Mostly just, not cowards. Mostly just cowards. This is where, well, the only guy that fought him was Midori, but he was pathetic as shit. He didn't even know how to throw a first punch or whatever. Not even a punch, proper punch. But this is where, well, he did also notice that the guy was kind of cocky, thinking that he was some kind of great hero or whatever. This is where, well, he then kind of just sighs, thinking that this school is pathetic. Should he roll over the school? I mean, there's a bunch of girls, but he doesn't really care about that. He only cares about a good fight. And, of course, to become the number one, like, uh, was it called delinquent and was it called all of Tokyo? Well, he only came here for only a couple things, but not the point. All over Japan, mostly a delinquent in Japan, like the most strongest delinquent, but not the point. This is where, well, because Tokyo is kind of taking a while to kind of take over from the fact that there's someone actually blocking him, and it's actually a girl, which mostly he sees the girls here as pathetic weaklings, but the girl in Tokyo is actually bothering him way too much. There's not actually a couple other people that resist and beat the shit of him, but not the point. Well, somewhat, but they can't always fight him entirely. Because he's stronger than normal. This is where, well, he's kind of looking all around saying, This place is so pathetic. How are these people supposed to be a top of, like, school thing? I mean, well, they're supposed to be smart. None of them look too smart like me. This is where, well, the person says. Because he thinks he's smart, but he's not entirely. But yeah. But this is where, well, mostly uh, the person is just, like, looking at everyone. And when he's taking steps forward, because, well, after knocking out Midori, this is where, well, mostly every girl is kind of getting scared and, star and mostly startled. But this is where, well, mostly before, like, some people can actually kind of take the man with this and mostly someone call the cops. Mostly someone was about to call the cops in an instant before getting their phone snatched from, well, someone. But this is where, well, they were confused in an instant before the phone literally just smashes upon their head. It was a female who was actually trying to do this, but she was confused in how her phone disappeared and smashed into her head. This is where someone just walked past her entirely, but this is where, well, the person who just walks past her really didn't know what... Or she didn't actually get a very close look in who exactly walked past her. Because everyone is startled trying to call their phones or just not trying to make any subtle movements. So they can actually be the next kind of in the chopping block. But this is where, well, they were confused in who exactly did that to that girl. Because the girl kind of just said, ow, what the heck? This is where she said it really loud because mostly her phone smashed into her face. But not the point. It went up in the air. And this is where, well, mostly the a biker gang members decide to look towards mostly the girl who just startly screamed. 
This is where, well, the leader was confused, and what he sees is a brownish haired boy walking towards him. With brownish goldenish, well, yeah, goldenish brown eyes, but showing no emotion in his eyes. This is where, well, he's showing zero emotion in his eyes. Now, behind him is basically two perverts who are right now startled as hell, and is right now kind of standing next to the girl, with mostly the phone who was kind of like crying out in pain. Because they were confused in why they follow him, mostly they follow their friend. But they only follow him because, well, he walked away from mostly just from them going downstairs. And they decide to follow him because, well, they're like lost puppies and want to stay together. But they're confused in why their friend is just walking straight up to a biker gang member. They realize what the situation was because everyone was quiet as hell. And this is where, well, mostly everyone decides to look up and kind of notice, well, mostly one of the perverted trio members being the per uh, perverted beast uh, for the car. Yeah. The beast of uh, what they call the perverted trio, kind of just walking up to the leader, leader of the biker gang. They were confused on what was going to happen. This is what, well, the leader says, huh? Hmm, are you supposed to fight me? Are you going to show me who you, uh, tell me, who are you? This is what, well, mostly the brownish hair boy stands right in front of, well, mostly the leader. And before anything can happen, he just looks at him. And just sighs and says, Be gone from my sight. This is where well, the leader was confused until his head just smashes to the ground so fast that no one actually could see what just exactly happened. This is where, well, mostly Issei then looks towards, well, the others. And yes, his name is Issei. This is where, well, no one was, just everyone was confused. The only person that managed to kind of get a glimpse of what the hell even happened was mostly someone with kind of, well, how should I say? Mostly one guy with spiky blondish hair. He kind of saw this before, maybe one time. Actually, no, a couple of times. This is where, well, he's actually afraid in who exactly this person's name is. This is where, well, the brownish hair boy says, You want to know my name? Fine. My name is Issei. Issei Hiro. This is where, well, they almost just, well, luckily some of the biker gangs almost just like, had a hard sack for a second until they heard the name. And last name is like, that's a good thing. This is where, well, Issei said, Oh, I should have mentioned, before I can actually say something, and before you all think that it's better not to have a heart attack. My original name for instead of being Hyoto used to be Kurokawa, but not the point, is it? It's nothing important, I just changed it a while ago. This is where almost all the biking members right now wind their eyes and had almost heart attacks in their eyes. Just like, not heart attacks, they almost had a bunch of heart attacks, which they almost just decided to have a retake of a heart attack. This is where, well, they all wind their eyes after seeing, well, the now confirmed Issei Hyoto, also known as used to be Kuragawa. This is where, well, people were confused, mostly from the school, confusedly and what the hell is talking about. Also, how the hell did he knock out that bigger guy? This is where, well, almost everyone was so confused. This is where, well, both of Issei's friends were just shocked to see mostly Issei do something like that. And this is where, well, mostly someone in the crowd from, like, the fodder, one of the members of this gang, and this is where, well, he says, Are you shitting me? Are we literally going to be fighting against a god of delinquents? No way in hell. I'd rather quit this gang. Fuck that. This is where the guy said. This is where, well, mostly the others started kind of having mostly a thoughts of also leaving this gang because they are not trying to fight against a god of delinquents, also known as Issei Karakawa. This is where, well, mostly everyone in the school were confused in why they're calling Issei the perverted beast. Mostly the god of delinquents. And this is where, well, mostly a bunch of fodder members start just running off. They're like, fuck that. They got on their bike and just decided to change fucking passports. Whatever. Started fucking leaving. This is where, well, mostly the members, the kind of like commanders of this gang just wind their eyes. This is where, well, mostly a guy with blondish hair, he says, ha, huh, no way this guy can be the god of delinquents. There's no way in hell. Those guys are really pathetic. You probably know that name from just somewhere else. There's no way in hell you can be the the same original annoying this word before he can even keep talking. He say looks at this guy and says, "Shut up, Shino." This is where he punches this guy in the face so hard in the face, right now making this guy kind of like bleed out from his nose and then saying, "Huh?" Well, not Shino, but let me say it again. So his name is Shin. Oh yeah, Shin. This is where well, mostly Shin just got a. Mostly a blood nose, and this is where he just like looks at the freaking palm of mostly his hand because he touched his face, and this is where he says, Holy shit, there's a lot of blood. 
he then looks up again. He was so confused and how he even like bleed that much because he didn't feel too much pain. It was a fast punch and he was just still kind of proceeding with his brain and what the fuck just happened. This is where, well, everyone of the commanders, the other commanders were just shocked. But before even Shin can even react, mostly he gets a leg kicked out from underneath him and then grabs his face into the ground and smashed onto the ground. This is where, well, mostly Issei says, pathetic. Issei started walking up to the others. This is where, well, the other two who are supposed to be mostly like looking similar to the same, but seem to be brothers. This is where the guy with glasses and the guy who kind of has braids, ponytails, whatever, I can whatever. Mostly, this is where, well, before those guys can even react, they actually want to fight against the God of Delungas because they wanted to know if the God of Delungas actually decide to, well, become weaker. But before they can even react, one actually decides to try to tackle Isik, the guy with kind of like lightish bluish hair in his hair, and the guy in mostly the taller one decides to try to punch him. This is where the guy who tried to tackle him didn't even manage to budge Isik. Instead, Isik managed to elbow him in the back, probably breaking his spine. This is where the guy who tries to punch him, and mostly the older looking guy, decides to get an uppercut and knocked out. This is where both of them were knocked out for the count. This is where, well, Isik says, that's quite pathetic. This is where, well, Isik then noticed the other member. Who the fuck did I also mention? I can't remember, but this is where, well, mostly the other member. Who was, oh, mo yeah, mostly the other member was a guy with blondish hair and kind of having sin and uh, punished. This is what, well, he noticed that uh, Issei was glaring at him. And before he can even run away, because he needed to run away, he gets his collar grabbed in an instant. You don't get to move. Don't you dare move, Hanma. You're going to stay here with me, and you're going to suffer with me. Wait, what? Why do I have to suffer? Wait, 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 wait. Don't hurt me, don't hurt me. I'm not going to hurt you. No, you're going to be with me. And no, not in such a gay way. I'm going to, well, show you what this fucking school is actually about. It's actually much more tougher or bold than ever. Wait, what? Don't worry. This is where, well, I'm say, but can I just? No, if you go, I'll punch you right in the face, clock you up, and still make you go to the school. Do you want to get knocked out and be unconscious and wonder how the fuck you were in the school and roll in the first place? Or do you want to be state conscious? I'm gonna say, I want to be state conscious. Don't hurt me. Please don't do it. No, no, no. Please. I'm, 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 I'm choking. I'm, please. Uh, uh, this is where, well, he's actually just scared of Issei entirely. This is where, well, before Issei, well, mostly Hama can keep talking, the leader decides to get up and says, Wow, that's a powerful kick. This is where, well, Issei says, Oh, self, you're actually woken up. I was going to wonder how long you were going to stay knocked out. Uh, whatever. This is where Self says, so you know my name. Good. Now I can show you what this true power is. He was about to take off his shirt and this is where, well, he says, if you're going to use Dark Impulse, just use it now. It would be just a waste of time for you just to take off your shirt and still get knocked out. Self grit his teeth and right now uses Dark Impulse to rush at Isik. This is where, well, he says, I'm not going to take damage at all. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to show that I'll become the god of the limbo before he can even ramble on. He gets... His head smashed to the ground again. This where this time he managed to get his head kind of axe kick down to the ground, and this is where well Issei decides to stomp on it again, smashing him down and kind of having a bloody crater on, on the ground. This is where well Issei says, "Shut up already! God, you're annoying." Whatever, Hanma. Hanma says, "Yes, yeah, yes. Do you do you need me?" This is where well get over here and just enroll yourself into the school. Why me? Shut the hell up. Do you want to die like the others? No, no, sir. No, 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 no. This is where, well, mostly Hanma decided to follow Issei. This is where, well, Issei is right now kind of not really having blood of his own on him. Mostly if he was hurt or any of that, he has blood of the others. Besides, he just beat the shit of like a couple of people that are supposedly strong, but they weren't even nothing to him. Because he's considered to be the god of Delunkans, somewhat in mostly the rumors but this where well the rumors exploded around the school very fast but this is where well before anything can even react or even go panic and wild mostly both of Issei's friends decide to go up to him and say what what were they talking about also who's this guy this is where they kind of look scared of Hama Hama is just scared of Issei he's not really scared of mostly Motohama or Masuda but this is where they're just mostly confused but we go into a time scope of Hama actually enrolling to the school somehow even with the bullshit records that he has, mostly Issei just said that he was a friend of his, blah, blah, blah. He managed to 
kind of bullshit uh, Sanji, which Sanji just decided to believe him. That, and he also heard of the rumors and videos of what mostly Issei did. Now, Sona wasn't there entirely. She actually went to kind of deal with Rias and her kind of bullshit excuses with mostly Riser and other things. So, of course, uh, that was the thing. So, of course, she really didn't understand what all the rumors and other things and videos kind of wandering around. Because they were mostly isolated and kind of doing chess, but not the point. But Sanji was the one taking care of like stuff like that. So, of course, he was mostly just scared, terrified of Issei, and just didn't want to fuck with him entirely. If he is considered to be the god of the delinquents, then he really is not trying to fuck with mostly Issei. Now, this is where, well, mostly uh, Sanji says, so, is that really all? This is where, well, Issei said, yes, that's all, Sanji. Why are you kind of being so nervous around a perverted beast like me? This is where, well, Sanji right now thinks and said, perverted beast, my ass. Motherfucker, you kicked the shit out of these gangsters, and they were very terrifying and quite powerful for normal humans. But in my case, you're not a normal human, are you? But still, I can't feel any uh, well, demonic magic from you or anything. You should be a normal human with fucking monstrous strength. Yeah, I really believe you. This is where, well, mostly, he says, oh, whatever, Hanma, let's just go. This is where Hanma gets up and says, e yeah, uh, when do I get my uniform? This is where, well, Sanji noticed how Hanma's terrified of Issei. This is where, well, mostly Sanji says, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, later, maybe, yeah, this is where, well, Hama nodded. Hama is right now walking with mostly Issei, he is still wearing the kind of uniform of the gang, and this is where, well, Issei says, well, let's see what kind of first classes you have, it's better if you don't run away. This is where, well, Hama says, what am I a leash on a, what am I a dog on a leash? Issei looks at Hama and says, of course not, you're not that. Maybe you are. Hmm. Maybe I have use for you. This is where, well, mostly Hama is scared of mostly Issei. The reason why he's scared of Issei is not just from the brutal strength that Issei kind of shows. It's from the manipulation inside that he has. Not many people know about this. Not many, not even his friends know about this. But those who actually know about the God of Delinquent status, Issei is basically Izana, Kuragawa, Mikey, well, mostly Majo Sano, and even what's it called, like Kisuke, uh, yeah, Kisuke, uh, what, I forgot his last name, but mostly, um, yeah, Kisuke from that guy, whatever. He reminds him of, like, every bad delinquent, even, like, Taiju strength and other shit. But, of course, just combine all into one and just being the most evilest bastard in the entire Tokyo, uh, mostly Shiba City, city. Because of how ruthless he was. Of how manipulating he was. That's why he was considered to be the god of delinquents. Not just because he didn't really need it to be in a gang. To show that he was completely stronger than any normal delinquent. But of course, he was also considered to be the one to take out just an army of delinquents. Because he was just that strong. He was powerful. No one could actually touch him. Mostly the only person that can actually fight him and actually give him a good chance of battle. Was none other than uh, Zana Kuragawa. His brother. But I will mention that later. This is where, well, mostly Han was just terrified of Issei's malevolent side. This is where, well, Issei says, ah, oh, whatever, like, just get to see your classes. But other than that, I will leave it off here for part one of this what if, because I, my stomach is starting to hurt, and I don't know why, but I'm going to go check in the bathroom, maybe. Uh, other than that, by saying, yeah. Other, yeah.